Today we're going to do slow stitching. Welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to be uh, working on fabrics. Um, we're going to be slow stitching and we're going to, I'm going to talk to you about manipulating fabrics. I, I chose these two fabrics. One's a sari silk and one's a black cotton and then just plain white cotton um, to use today. And I, I hope that doesn't sound too boring to you because we're going to be making marks with bleach. So I, I decided that I was going to use um, a, a very basic color palette for the slow stitch video and I thought it would be fun to use bleach because number one, everyone has bleach. Um, if you don't have it, you can get it easily and it makes the most fabulous marks on cloth and, uh, and now they will be wonderfully fun to stitch. Now, I'm going to tell you this is super easy to do, but my caveat is you should wear gloves, you should wear a mask, you should do it in a well-ventilated area. Don't do four pieces at once. Do one piece, let it dry, and then wash it off. You are going to use a tiny little bit of bleach and a very old brush to create your marks. Now you can make any kind of, use any kind of tool you want to, to do that, but I would suggest using a brush and then you get these wonderful marks. If you leave it on too long, of course, you're going to get holes in the fabric, which I absolutely think is wonderful and I L-O-V-E love them. Um, so, and I would say stick with pretty simple shape um, and uh, and just play with it and have fun with it but like I said treat it with care it will burn your lungs it will burn your skin it is highly caustic as you know it eats holes and things so be very very careful if you decide to use it um, so there you go. Um, what I did was I actually painted it. I laid the fabric down in my old glass dish and then just painted it lightly and left it in our laundry room and let it dry. And then I rinsed them out with water and they just dried just like this perfectly. So we're going to have fun stitching on these today. So if you're brand new to our channel, my name is Katharina Giglio, my friends call me Kat, and the wonderful guy behind the camera is Don Diggison, and he is my my husband and our videographer. And um, if you don't know, then what I want to tell you is this channel is brought to you by you. Um, we don't have any sponsorship other than you. Um, and we do get money from Amazon. Thank you very much for your Amazon, um, for supporting our links on Amazon. And um, small amount. A small amount, yes. <laughs> very small amount. But anyway, thank you. Thank you for using um, our recommended products and thank you for um, using our links to buy whatever you want on Amazon. We also thank you for your thumbs up, your likes, your comments, um, and your shares. Um, thank you for sharing our our videos <clears throat> with other people we appreciate that and for supporting the gallery and purchasing my artwork we appreciate that so much um, so thank you um, also if you're not following me on social media I'm on Instagram and on Facebook and we have a private Facebook group and just like on our other stitch videos we asked them what they wanted to hear me talk about today so I have lots of things to chat you up about but let's go back to slow stitching for a minute so I love these holes and I really thought it would be fun to just stitch um, around them and um, to really emphasize the holes in the fabric <clears throat> I thought it would be very cool, especially if we're going to use <clears throat> a black fabric underneath or even a white fabric underneath because it's really going to show up. So <clears throat> bleach is just such a, a fantastic thing. It, uh, it 
it really um, creates wonderful marks of intention on fabric and that's what stitching is stitching is another way of mark making and um, creating intention and um, as I've said before I've used it in my work for for many years I just I love stitching and I love slow stitching which is a form of meditation and, and meditative practice and we're going to talk a little bit more about that a little bit later so if you want to join our Facebook group because that we chat with everyone in the group um, about the videos and what they want to see and what they what they want to ask us so if you'd like to join that group um, just remember to answer all the questions and uh, to agree to the rules because if you don't you will give Don conniptions um, he hates it when he can't find you and let you know that you need to to answer all the questions and to <laughs> right actually there's only one question there's one question <clears throat> do you agree to the rules and tell us about yourself right I think yeah okay so anyway and the rules are you, you can tell them the rules. Be kind. No politics, no religion. And share things that you've been inspired by our videos to create. And that's it. It's pretty simple, pretty easy. But anyway, so we have a lot of questions today to answer and I want to get started on those. And the first one that comes to mind is from Diana. And Diana asked about needles, sizes, and ribbons. Did I just make that, did I get that out of your field of vision? I'm okay, all right. Um, Diana wanted to know about needle sizes, threads, not ribbons, about sizes for needles and different kinds of threads. And she's read lots of articles she said and it drives her crazy. And what I would say is, Diana, stop reading and just do. Um, Slow stitch is about using what you have. And these are fabrics that I had laying around and just thought I wanted to use these. It's about recycling and um, using whatever needles and threads you have. In fact, the wonkier and the crazier the stitch, the better, the more interest that you get from the textiles, the more layers and um, you know I'm gonna say this today and probably again you know over and over again is if you come up to um, someone who's offering some kind of instruction and there's all these rules you want to run away as fast as you can because there aren't any rules in mixing media the whole point of mixing media is that you let go of the perception of rules and you do what you want to do and that's how true art is made. It's by just listening to your own intuition and, um, and doing what feels right to you. So if you have a really large needle and you want to use that, use that. If you have small needles, like I'm using the small needle for this because it's silk and I thought it would just be easier to use. But I have larger needles threaded to use for the black fabric if I want. Um, so I just thread and use an assortment of needles and different sizes of thread, anywhere from upholstery thread I have. Um, and today we're also using a uh, button thread. Um, so it's just, it's about creating that sense of drama and the layers. And layers are what you want to share. You know, you want to show that. You want to see that there's this big nubby piece here that was left over that creates interest in your work. And, um, and so, yeah, run away from rules. Run away from all of that stuff and just do what, what looks aesthetically pleasing to you. So Eileen asked, Aileen, A-I-L-E-E-N, Aileen, I think, yeah. Um, about adding different um, fabrics. Um, she said how to add different kinds of fabrics. And so I'm assuming that you mean uh, like prints and things like that. 
and um, I would use prints, different kinds of prints in the same color scheme. So like if you're doing a floral pattern that has uh, red and blue flowers, then using something that has a red polka dot with it would be lovely. You know, try to coordinate the colors together so that you're not, so that it's not all over the place. It's just, you know, that, that it's, um, that it's interesting too, because when you're working with stitches, then you're all, you're going to have uh, the flow and the direction of the stitch as well as the fabric and the color. And so you, you don't want it to be all over the place because then the eye won't be arrested and you want the eye to stop and look at whatever it is that you're, that you're creating. You don't want it. You don't want the eye to bounce around and then right off your piece. So, but today when slow stitching, I mean, that would be if you're creating some kind of fabric textile piece. Um, but today for us, for slow stitching, we're just, uh, we're just about stitching. We're all about stitching. I don't have any real plans to create a piece out of these. Um, and if I do, I will put it into my book, this um, string journal that I have. Um, it, you know, and I may end up doing that. But right in this moment, as I'm working on this, I have no agenda. It's just, I'm just um, creating interest around the circles and enjoying this moment. And I'm just taking my time. And somebody asked me about that taking time. Who was it? I can't remember now. Um, anyway, so just letting your needle, you know, have a wander around and not worrying about um, anything other than the stitch. And as you notice, I'm not doing anything special. I'm just, I'm just stitching around the circles and just creating more interest in the fabric. That's all. Um, so, okay, next question is from Becky, and she wanted to talk, wanted me to talk about um, combining lace doilies and tatting. And I would say, Becky, there's no rules about it, but one of the things I like to do is, you know, we have a tendency to look at those pieces and to try to use the, the piece in its entirety. And I would say cutting them into smaller pieces um, makes more sense. And I'll, I'll talk about that when I move on to the uh, black fabric in just a minute too. Um, so, and so right now this piece is starting to tear as I'm doing this because of course the bleach has um, degraded the fabric. So <clears throat> I'm just gonna go with that and just keep stitching around it in whatever shape it turns into and not worry about it. Because after all, this is a meditative process. And so I like the way that this turned out and um, it has a real organic look to it. Um, and I'll probably go back and, and stitch around this. And, and I, I'll probably stitch around these too because I think that would be really interesting. Um, but we're gonna move on to these fabrics um, and because I have so many things I wanted to share with you today. So I think we'll get started on that. And then <clears throat> when, you know, Becky had asked about using laces. And so I have this old <clears throat> piece, this old lace, old petticoat lace is what it, what it is. <clears throat> and so rather than using a whole piece on here, just cutting them up into smaller pieces to create um, different shapes so that you're, it's not all going in, in one direction, I think would be really interesting. Um, it's gonna be too dark to use on here, <clears throat> but you know, you could use a small piece on here as well. So, so cutting, cutting up those doilies, cutting up those pieces and using bits of them um, and, and incorporating that in your work and just, um, just playing with it and seeing what looks good to you, um, what feels right. So one of the things that I liked about this was how light the fabric got. It became very gray. And, and I thought, you know, pieces of gray fabric in here would be really wonderful too. <clears throat> and um, kind of interesting. Um, but we're going to do some stitching on here just because um, I thought it would be fun that since we created these, 
these spaces here in the black fabric that we would stitch um, back and forth over them. So that's what I thought I would do next. And um, <clears throat> and um, Angelita had a question, and she goes by Lita. Um, so Lita, I'm going to answer your question now. And you asked me this wonderful question. It's a really great question, actually, <clears throat> about how do you transfer what you're feeling into art? Oh, God, what a fabulous question that is. Um, <clears throat> Well, I don't ever even think about it. I put, it's whatever I'm working on seems to translate into that feeling. So, <clears throat> uh, art is about a lot of things. It's about the colors that you choose. It's about the media that you use. It's about the, um, the intensity with which you paint. There are a lot of different ways that you convey feeling. It's about the subject matter. It's about what the subject matter represents to you. Uh, so choosing those things all really wisely. If you're wanting to convey uh, an, a particular emotion, then you want to do it um, in a particular way. For instance, when my brother died, <clears throat> um, I created a painting and it's called I think I'll disappear now and it had a lot of energy and a lot of movement and it was very dark and uh, it had a black box in the center which was where I felt like he had gone to uh, because certainly you know what they call the black dog or depression or Anger um, was something that really haunted him. So that painting, um, you know, every time I look at it, I can I can go back and feel that. And I think people do feel it when they look at it, don't you? Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, so I think that where you are at that particular point in time will dictate um, exactly what you're what you're creating and will show your emotion. Um, your feelings will come out and come through um, <clears throat> in what you're doing, just by virtue of what you choose. So. Uh, the other thing I would say, Lita, about um, transferring your feelings is that they, it just naturally happens that whatever you're thinking about you're going to be translating into your work. Um, all of my bodies of work have particular um, energies and feelings about them. Uh, my excavations work was dealing with lots of issues that were going on in my family. Um, and the, you know, it's all about relationships for me. And um, my, how does my garden grow? About my relationship with my garden and my relationship to nature. Um, so it all translates. Whatever you're thinking about, you're going to put it into your work. So I'm, I'm really liking the way this is coming out now. Um, and, uh, and as you notice in slow stitching, it's about, um, well, you aren't thinking about whether your stitch is straight. <laughs> You're not thinking about anything other than just stitching and that's the meditation about it. You're just unhooking your mind and letting your fingers do the work and just allowing whatever comes up to come up. There's no judgment about what you're creating. So I'm going to rip these into different pieces. So I'm going to separate the, the uh, circles from the stripes. And uh, since we did stripes in the last one, I think I'll do some, well, I don't know. I think I might want to do this instead. 
Yeah, I think I'll do this. Okay, so let's see. One last question. Who is that from? It was from Susie. And Susie lives in Oz in Australia. And uh, Susie said she can't understand why she can't get her dye fabrics um, dark enough. Why they're not coming out with the same kind of color patterns, the dark color patterns that mine do. So, um, Susie, I think um, your dye bath probably isn't dark enough. So what I would say is use like three or four tea bags of really dark tea and um, put them into a mug and let it steep for a good day. And then make your bundles, put them in a shallow dish, a glass dish is the best, and cover them up so that they're soaking wet. And then uh, then drain off at least half of it, maybe even more, and then just let them dry. And you should get a better, um, hopefully it will look a little bit better, um, be more what you're looking for in those dark striations. I know that, um, that sometimes it's, unless we actually do a video on the dyeing, and I suppose we could do that sometime, um, it's kind of hard to see, um, exactly how to do it but just keep playing with it and the dye bath has to be dark and the fabric has to sit up and just dry naturally um, and it should get a really nice deep dark color um, so anyway that's that's try that and see how it works and then let me know whether or not it was a success but yeah that it's the drying uh, it's, it's the getting completely soaked and then sitting it up and letting it completely dry um, and not don't drain off all of the scummy <laughs> tea water I mean it gets kind of yucky when you've had it in there for several days but really that's what you have to do and then just let it dry um, so we'll see how that works out for you so so I'm really in love with the circles and um, I love the way this one turned out and um, in these and um, we're almost at chow for now and uh, so I hope you give this a little try and play with it and see what you think and take your time and go slow and enjoy every single stitch. I may uh, create some textile pieces and put them in this book if you remember this is my one of my Frankenstein journals it's um, it's the uh, string journal and I created a, a large page using a, um, an old tea towel. And I thought that these pieces would be really fun in here. So remember that little tiny book that we made that was all the stitches, incorporated all the stitches? So this would be a larger book. Um, and so it would hold some of these stitches like this. And I just thought, well, that would be a perfect way to use this book. Lippincott's home manuals. Um, so I'm thinking that's where it's gonna go. But today, it's just all about the tiny stitches. Okay. So, well, we're at chow for now. And uh, next time we get together, I'm not sure when that's going to be, but next time we do get together, we're going to be making a not a junk journal. We're how not to make a junk journal that's what it is how not to make a junk journal so we're going to be playing with that and we're going to be having a lot of fun and so i can't wait to see you next time so ciao for now